All right, brothers and sisters, I hope uh, you can be able to hear us. So now, today, today we'll be speaking about um, um, the need of mutual charity. And of course, uh, Paul is also speaking about the many friends in Rome that he had. And uh, we'll be speaking from the book of uh, Romans chapter 6, chapter 16, sorry. So the Bible says, uh, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sancrea, right? Actually, you should start with a word of prayer so that this can really get deep quickly, yeah? Lord, we thank you for this moment as we start the Bible study. May you start with us. May you help us. May you open our understanding. May you open our minds to knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, Romans chapter 16 from verse 1, the Bible says, uh, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at uh, Sancrea, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that you assist her in whatever business she has need of you, for she has been a uh, sakora of many and of myself also. Now Paul is talking about Phoebe, a lady who really assisted Paul in her missions. Uh, she's one of the people who was a great pillar in the ministry of Paul in helping you know women usually have a sense of helping especially in the church in gathering meetings they, they, wherever there are women around they're always trying to uh, help in one thing or another i also uh, there's also another lady called lydia who really opened even a house for the apostles to come in and even stay there lounge there for a while as they're also doing missions so God has put forth a, a soft spot for the women, for the ladies, especially in the ministry, to hold people in different things and uh, to pray with people, even to teach and encourage women, encourage other children. But of course, when it comes to authority, especially in the church, that's where you find uh, the Bible is a bit uh, very strict on the position of the man versus the women because now that comes to leadership and um, we have we have been having a great um, we've been having a great debate between the church whereby people have been saying but you see you know this this woman can lead in the church this woman should not lead in the church mm -hmm. for me what I what I think and what I believe is that uh, women can be of great help in the church but when it comes to leadership skills, the reason why God says that let women not lead in the church, but they can do many other things in the church, teach children, teach women, you know, even help in Bible discussions and all that, is because when it comes to authority, women have a soft spot. Think about somebody just comes and deceives a woman in a certain way and, you know, maybe, you know, the way women are like is not like men men sometimes they use a lot of logic and things but women use a lot of emotions <laughs> right uh, women use a lot of emotions that's why women can multitask because they're emotional in almost everything they can hold a baby hold this do this do this they are everywhere at the same moment it's all about emotion but men they they are focused on one thing mostly logic and uh, that difference is very important in leadership Leadership, there's always a plan whenever leadership comes in. And that's why God probably uh, put men in charge of leadership of the church so that the man can be able to have the whole plan of how, where the church is heading, all this. But now the others can come as helpers, just like the way it is also in the family. Just imagine a family where the woman is the leader, then that family is really confused because uh, people say if, if the man is a woman and the the woman is the man, then there's a lot of confusion. Every person has his own duty. It's not that uh, that that some people are being demeaned. No, nothing like that. It's only that 
you just do your duty as God set you. Just like Paul here is talking about this, this lady, Phoebe, mm -hmm. who has been a servant of the church. Yeah. She has really been serving the church, which is at uh, St. Crea, something like that, all right? Mm -hmm. And then verse 3, Paul says, Greet Priscilla and Achilla, my helpers in Christ Jesus. You see, Priscilla and Achilla, they, they have been helpers of Paul, helping him in Christ Jesus in so many things. There are so many things that the women can be of great help. And if we follow the, the, the way Jesus put it, remember the church is the wife of Christ. Christ is the head of the church, is the husband. Now just imagine, do, do you think the church can marry Christ? It's not possible, you know. <laughs> so there must be positions of ruleship in everything. And that's what is really, really important. And... Um, Verse 4, he says, Who have for my life laid down their... Who have for my life laid down their own necks? You know, the woman is a neck. So Paul is saying, They laid down their own necks for me. And to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Paul is trying to thank so much these women mm -hmm. who they have laid their own necks not their heads, because the women are not the head, but they are in the neck. They are helping. You see, the head cannot move unless the neck is helping the head to move. You see? So the woman has a special point, a special area of work, which is so important that, that it, is, it is something that should not be looked down upon. But also, the neck can never be the head. All right. So if if you just take your position and you do exactly what God has set you for, then everything else just goes on smoothly and you'll have no worries about your life. Okay. Um verse 5 says, Likewise, greet the church that is in greet the church that is in their house. These women, they have a church in their house, they are hosting a whole church in their house, all right? Mm -hmm. Salute my well-beloved um, Ephenetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. You see, they're also winning people to Christ. They're also winning people to Christ through their hospitality in their houses. You see, these, these are exactly women should be like, okay? Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us, are you seeing women is all about helping in different situations? Yeah. They, Mary bestowed a lot of labor on Paul and the other ministers. They, they were of great help. Something which is different from probably what you can see with men. Men to some point, they might not be of great help in one way or another, but they can be leaders in one thing or another, or they can be sent into missions, into the hardship areas. We always send men, even when you're going for... Uh, hardship area missions is always send some couple of men when you have women there mostly they'll come as helpers in one way or another maybe to cook for the people as they are going deep into it. even even back in the in the old days it used to be the same thing whenever men were going hunting the women were there preparing some food and fixing things nothing has changed god has not changed the order of things even in in his word is exactly the same way and if we follow his order, there won't be all this confusion like what we are seeing right now with the LGBT and all this other confusion. It's happening because women want to take position of men and men want to take the position of women. It's total confusion. And when men start marrying men and women marrying women, uh, or when, when women start being men, then all of a sudden the, the, the women who have become men, they want to marry women. Because if you feel like you're high up there, you need someone who is low down there. And if for the men who have decided to take the position of the women, they'll find themselves getting married to other men. So that that is really, really important to look at these things in the angle of God's eyes. Yeah. Then verse 7, uh, Paul says, Salute Ad Adrokin Adronicus and Junior, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are who are of not among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. You see, Paul is also acknowledging these people. 
they were in Christ even before before even God saved they were already in Christ yeah. and they are my fellow prisoners eh? all right yeah. who are not among the apostles mm-hmm. and then he says verse 8 greet Ampelius my beloved in the Lord salute Uban our helper in Christ and staff staff starches my beloved mm-hmm. salute Apelles approved in Christ salute them which are of a Christobulus household. Mm-hmm. Sal- salute Hedro- Herodidro. Hey. <laughs> okay, you'll forgive me for this. Salute Herodion, my kinsman. Mm-hmm. Greet them that be of the household of Nicarsius, which are in the Lord. Salute Typhena and Ty- Tryphosa, Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Salute beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Mm-hmm. Salute Ansacritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Pantro- Patrophas, Hermes, and brethren which are with them. Salute Philologas and Jul- Julia, Nerosas and Sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. All right. Now here Paul is trying to touch on different people. That is um, saluting and thanking and appreciating, acknowledging for the way they have also cared for the ministers of of Christ Uh, during different times. They have accepted them into their houses. They have also cared for them probably prepared some food for the ministers as they were moving up and down. And of course, all these people, they have rewards in heaven. They have rewards in heaven. And uh, when, when, when the Bible talks about us being, some people being eyes, others being hands, feet, nose, ears, we are one body but fitted together with different parts. There are people who are going to pray for others going to the mission field. There are others who are going to go to the actual mission field. There are others who are going to provide probably some food for those who are going. There are others who are going to watch the way. There are spies like in the in the children of Israel when they are going to the promised land. There are people who are sent as spies. Not all people are told, okay, go all of you to go and spy uh, the promised land. You see, so it's one body with yeah. different parts. So these people, like Paul is greeting them, he is thanking them for the different callings that they have bestowed upon the church, upon the body of Christ, and thanking them for whatever they are doing, knowing that these people, they have been of great help to the ministry, and they have their own reward at their due time. All right? And then uh, the Bible continues and says, Um... Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. This is verse 17. Mark those who bring divisions. In church, there are always people who are bringing in divisions and and offenses contrary to the doctrine. You see somebody is trying to teach a different doctrine. You ask him, well, what is this you are trying to teach? This is not of God. I once had another guy tell me, you know, you're telling me this and I've been in the church for over 25 years. Or, I'm like, but what you're teaching is heresy, bro. The Bible says this, but you're saying this. So even if you've been in church for 25 years, it's, it's, it's not exactly what is written in the Bible. And if it's not what is written in the Bible, it doesn't matter how long you've been there. Then at the end of the day, we'll just know that you've never been with us. Because there are so many people who the Bible says they went out from us because they were never with us. Because if they would have been with us, they would have stayed with us. But they went out so that it would be made manifest they were never with us. Understand? Mm-hmm. The Bible is very clear. This is a great falling away, yeah. which is going to uh, bring out so many characters of people who have been hiding. Just stay in the closet somewhere because, you know, Christianity is really good. You know, there are even pastors who are pastors because, you know, I can get some money from the people, free lunch, free food, free car, free these, 10% tithes, which uh, for me, I believe tithe is just a thing of the past. The Bible talks about tithe. The tithe was uh, a command 
of the law. Now we are no longer under the law, we are under grace. So if you're still tithing out there, tithe is, is not of today, is is of the law. Actually, it was a command back then to give 10%. Now, Jesus says that he loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, not, he's not saying that give who or give who or give to the church. It just says whoever is in need, give them. And actually gave a good example in Matthew 25 where Jesus says that I was I was in prison. He didn't come to see me. I was, uh, I was hungry. He didn't give me. He didn't say my pastor was hungry. No. Yes, if the pastor is hungry, give him. If there is a need in the church, do it. Because you, you're called to be like Christ. You're called to serve in the ministry. You don't just sit down there and you have your money and people are going for missions and they need food or they need this and this and, and you can give because it's the church. No, that's not what I'm saying. But the command to give to a pastor or to give to a to 10% to the church, like you no... Know, Whoever gave tithe, <laughs> whoever gave tithe cheerfully, nobody. <laughs> nobody has ever given tithe cheerfully. Jesus loves, God loves a cheerful giver. So when do you ever give tithe cheerfully? You make your uh, couple of bucks and you're told 10% give it to the church. You're like, I just don't want to give this right now because I have A, B, C, D. But God is looking for your intentions of your heart. How you give. And actually the pastors who keep on telling people to give tithes 10%, come here, bring your seed, your tithes. I, to me, they're absolute liars. Because at the end of the day, and even they're even doing more harm to their churches and yeah. to themselves. Because when God says he loves a cheerful giver, it means if you're really cheerful in giving and you give from your heart, you can even give 100%. You don't need to give 10%. Because you love God so much that you can even give everything that you have. Yeah. So it doesn't really, these pastors, they're only putting people in a cocoon because, you know, I, I want that 10%. It's literally their salary. They have their reward. So anyway, today I was not about talking about that, but I'll speak about it on another day. So uh, the, verse 17 has said, Mark those which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Then verse 18 says, for they, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. They serve their own bellies. Yeah? And by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They have very nice speeches. Have you ever seen con men, the way they speak with very fair speeches? Very fair speeches. They speak so nicely. By good words and fair speeches they deceive the hearts of the simple. You see people flocking in churches where the pastor is speaking in big terminologies. He wears designer suits and he speaks as if he's just dropped from heaven. But then at the end of the day, the simple are deceived. This thing is happening so much, especially in Kenya. Yeah. So many fake pastors, very, like there are, there are fake pastors that you don't need to be told is fake. You just know this guy is fake. Absolutely, this guy is just fake. Yeah. No doctrine, he doesn't know anything. There's a church that we, we went, you remember in, it was uh, some Baptist church when we were living in Nairobi. And, and, and when we went there, uh, it was a new church. So when we got there, we, I decided, okay, let me, just, let me just talk to the pastor and hear, you know, what are their beliefs, core beliefs. I just don't have to sit down and, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, and just continue in a place where I don't know their core beliefs. So we had a good time, and and the fact that you've just come in, you're a, you're a new person, the pastor will be all like, "Oh, brother, oh sister, welcome, welcome." <laughs> and when we got there, I remember that day when when I told the pastor, "Pastor, yeah, I really want to know about salvation." You know, I just, pastor, I just want to know about salvation. What do you think? Can someone lose salvation? Now, what do you think? We we talked about a couple of things, and Pastor was like, "Yeah, you see, you see, you see." And when I started touching on tithes and asking, "Should women lead in church tithes?" and "Can you lose your salvation?" and blah blah, some deep, deep, important things, and even started asking some very uh, deep things like the atonement. What is the atonement? I started asking like, uh, you know, how exactly someone saved you find that even the pastor doesn't really understand. 
And if he doesn't really understand, because when you ask someone and he just tells you, you need to believe in Jesus, what actually are you believing about Jesus? The Bible says even the demons believe and they tremble. They believe, they know Jesus is real. But are they saved? No, they are not saved. So there must be something that you're believing about Jesus which defines your salvation. And that is believing in what he did for us, how he died for our sins. That is the most important thing. But now for those who don't understand this, you'll find there are churches, people who just don't understand what is going on. They are a bit mixed up. All right. Yeah. So the Bible talks about these kind of people because they only have some fair speeches deceiving the hearts of the simple. Mm -hmm. Then verse 19, excuse me, says, For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, yet I would have I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. All right. So Paul is talking about something here. He's saying that your obedience has come unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. I want you to be so strict on that which is right. And if it's evil, I want you also you not to look down upon it. But there are people who always look the other way when you see somebody speak something which is heretical and is evil, you just feel embarrassed and you're like, oh, I won't talk about it. You know, he's the overseer. He's the... No, come on. The Paul says, speak about it. All right? Mm -hmm. Speak about it. And uh, he says that mark them which cause divisions. Yeah. Actually, the Bible says uh, those who are contrary, uh, the, the, those who are doing evil things, expose them so that others may fear. But people nowadays don't want to expose people mm -hmm. they don't, uh, because everybody's always saying, do not touch the anointed. Come on. At the end of the day, we are all anointed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are all anointed. There is no one who is not anointed. We are all anointed. All of us. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the Holy Spirit, you have full dose. Of, and there is no small anointing, big anointing. No. We all have the same. We have drunk from the same spirit. Yes. All right? We are all equal. The only difference is probably you study the Bible more, the other, the other one is not yet studying more. So you're still anointed, but you're a baby Christian. He's a mature Christian who is doing digging deep in the, in the Word of God. But we're all Christians. We're all going to the same heaven. Don't be lied by anyone about that. Yeah. And then verse 20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Is this making some sense? Remember the promise from Garden of Eden? The seed of the woman shall crush the seed of the serpent on the head. So how is Jesus crushing? Listen to that verse again. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. So he's bruising him under your feet, meaning he shall be in you. <laughs> Jesus in you is, is yeah. bruising Satan under your feet. So yeah. he's in you and you're in him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So Jesus is in you. And uh, let, me, let me show you something else. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, where, where we, mm -hmm. And the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my fellow work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sospita, my kinsmen, I salute you. I, Tartesius, who wrote this epistle, write you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Carters, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. All right? Now, listen to verse 25. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation 
of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Listen to this. The Bible, Paul is saying here, to the one who is able to establish you, okay? He's able to establish you or establish you according to my gospel. Remember, uh, this gospel of grace was given to the Apostle Paul. And Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul is not trying to raise himself or to make himself uh, better than anyone else. No, but he's trying to say, you guys follow me because I'm following Christ. Christ gave me this gospel and he told me, give it to people. And remember what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter, I think it's, I believe it's nine, if I'm not wrong, chapter, chapter 10. It says, uh, 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 it says, verse 15, how shall they, uh, uh, verse 14, is, uh, verse 13, it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And then how shall they hear without a preacher? So when Paul says, follow me, it's because he's been given that gospel and he's the preacher. So anyone else who preaches anything else apart from the gospel of Paul, the gospel of grace, the gospel which was given to the Apostle Paul in this dispensation of grace, then uh, he's lost. He is literally teaching another gospel. He's teaching another gospel which is totally different because the gospel of today is not about Jesus the Messiah. He's about what Jesus did for us. It's not about who Jesus is, but what Jesus did for us. Yes, who is one part. You have to know who Jesus is. But the most critical part that we need to understand is what he did for us. That is what saved us. That he died for our sins. Remember Jesus when he came, he said that um, I was not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. So Jesus was literally coming to preach or to, 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 for the lost children of Israel. He was coming as the Messiah to the Jews. But when they rejected him, the, the gospel went to the Gentiles. So now it's all about understanding what Jesus did for us. And if you understand that, he is able to establish you. Do you hear that? He's able to establish you according to that gospel and according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Remember this revelation of the gospel, it was there. Grace was still there even in the days of Noah. Remember the Bible says, and Noah found grace in the eyes of God. So how did Noah find grace if grace was not there? Grace was still there. Grace didn't come the other day. It was there, but it was hidden. Because Noah was not like a righteous man. No. Yes, he was a preacher of righteousness, but he was just a normal guy who could find himself in, in sin. So he found grace. And how, how was he able to be saved out of billions of people probably? It is because he found grace in the eyes of God. Leave alone the whole aspect of genes, his gene being. Uh, of course, he was pure blood. The other people had already contaminated themselves, but he found grace because he was no different than any other human being. He was still a child of Adam. So at the end of the day, he got grace. So grace was there. And this is a mystery which was hidden before the world began. But now it is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. All right? For the obedience of the faith. So if you obey your faith, God is going to show you this mystery and is going to change you and is going to make you be able to understand. For sure, I've been loved. Actually, I always say one thing that we have all been forgiven by God. The only reason why people are going to hell is because they have never believed. True. People have never believed. And if you're not believed, then you'll go to hell because you don't even know that you're saved.
You don't know that you're forgiven. It's like, for example, always give an example and say, if your house is about to be locked mm -hmm. and then you call me and you tell me, Keith, please help me. Could you pay for me my rent? And I go to the bank and I pay. And then I tell you, all you need to go is just go and sign and accept the payment. And then you keep on saying, Keith, please pay for me. I tell you, bro, sis, but I already paid for, I already paid it for you. Why can't you just go and pick, okay, and sign and accept? Now, if your house will be locked, you cannot blame me because I did my part, I paid. It is only you who did not go and accept it and sign for it. So Jesus at the cross, he already paid for our sin, the, the penalty of sin. And he says, actually, it's finished. So the only thing which is sending people to hell is because they have never received it. And how do you receive that payment? By faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. And people don't want to hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So they want to hear everything else but the word of God. So that's why they'll never know that they're being forgiven. Because if you hear the word of God, the word of God tells you that you're being forgiven. But people are not really ready to hear that they're being forgiven. Live alone knowing that they are sinners. All right? They are sinners who have been forgiven. But then how does this come into them? How does the salvation come into them? By believing. So if you don't hear, you don't believe, then you, you're not saved. I believe that has, has been a blessing. Maybe if you have something to say. Yes. Not really. Say hi to the sisters. Hi, people. <laughs> you told me to say hi to, to the people, so I said hi, people. <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's been a blessing. Actually, I think uh, this is the last chapter of the book, right? Yeah, actually. Should be, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, basically, romance has been, uh, and say, one of the best books we've gone through together been amazing all about uh, teaching about uh, salvation and uh, how to live with other people caring for one another um, and ministry work Paul talking about uh, ministry work yeah it's been amazing uh, I've learned a lot in it yeah and I believe you too will uh, continue learning with us in the next uh, books we'll be studying. Yeah. yeah, so Karibu, meaning welcome. We study together in the rest. Okay, God bless you. To, uh, tomorrow we'll be starting the book of uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians. You can always share these videos and uh, you can subscribe and send them to others so that also they can as well be able to hear the good news of Christ Jesus. God bless you and have a beautiful, beautiful night. Good night.